Hello, this is Annie Sprinkle with your daily scoop. It is February 29th, 2016. It's leap day. Leap day. We got an extra day this year. So I'll have to somehow get in 366 scoops. So my flavor of the day is my favorite, Cherry Gracias. And I'm, I'm making Cherry Gracias the flavor today because I just want to thank everybody for their patience because I have not been doing the daily scoop for some time. I had a little uh, time off here and I'm trying to get back at it. So, um, and my sister Janice informed me that I am onto something brilliant here. So I have got to continue with the daily scoop. Okay, so she is tuning in. And today we are going to get back to basics. Um, I'm going to bring an expert into the room, but what you're seeing on your screen is something called a power and control wheel. That's on my left. And on my right is the equality wheel. So we're going to talk about the power control wheel and the equality wheel, uh, which is really the core power and control, or I should say the misuse of power and control, as my friend Jack would put it. That's really the core or the root of domestic violence in, in terms of trying to define it or show you what it looks like. So these wheels also can be found online if you want to just Google the Duluth model. And... Um, you know, because I'm sure you're probably not getting a good visual here uh, on your screen, but you can call it up and um, look for these. And while uh, you're doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce the power and control wheel uh, via a YouTube video um, by Ellen Pence, uh, who I call the mother of the movement. Many people call her the mother of the movement. We lost Ellen, sadly, some years ago to breast cancer, but she is the co-creator of the Power and Control Wheel and, um, like I said, the mother of the movement. So without further ado, I'm going to give you a five-minute video here that gives you a good, uh, good summary or explanation, if you will, of the Power and Control Wheel. And um, like I said, this is kind of getting back to basics. And... Um, I'm probably not going to have time for this today, but what I do want to share tomorrow is part of my personal story. But I wanted you to get this basic knowledge down first, okay? So we'll listen to Ellen Pence. I'm going to share some missing facts, and then we're going to go around that wheel, and we're going to talk a little bit about that, okay? Just taking a second to queue up. Uh, we decided what we're going to teach you. We went to the women's groups and said, okay, if we can get these guys for eight weeks or ten weeks or fifty or however long we get them, what do you want us to teach them? And out of that, eventually came the power and control of those sessions with the women. And this is the one that I remember that really got to me. This woman said, if you live with a batterer, it is not cyclical. It isn't something that comes and goes. You live with a batterer every day, even when he's being nice to you. It's a part of the violence. Because if he's raping you and telling you you're no good and you're ugly here, and then three days later he's telling you you're beautiful and I need you and I want you, it's all part of the same thing. And don't think it's cyclical. And I'll well, you know, I never thought that. And, you know, I think I must have said it was cyclical, right? <laughs> so um, then I kept saying, well, okay, what else is it like to live with a bad herb? And then I remember coming back in that meeting and saying to Cora and Michael, we just got to go to these women's groups and ask these questions. And so we started going, what's it like to live with them? Like, describe it. And people started to tell stories. And then people, then we got into the word tactics. Somehow in the process, the word tactics came out. And we started asking them, what other tactics does he use against you besides violence? And, um, he never did let us have any friends so then we get all the women to tell a story about that who doesn't he let you see when and then the word isolation started coming up we lumped all that under isolation and he's always putting you down and calling your names and what are all the things he's doing that when they talk about that and then emotional abuse became that category and so it came from these stories we actually had more tactics than what are on that power and control wheel but they didn't display well graphically. You know, 
know, you just had to, all right, let's get down to the big nine or whatever, because you could do a lot more tactics. This time I wish now we had done from the beginning because it's so fundamental, but the ones that are on there, I think, are core tactics that almost all abusers use, you know. Um, so anyways, these stories then, if every woman in the room had a story that fit this thing, then we knew it was a core tactic. And we, we went to about three, we always had our groups in neighborhoods, so in Central Duluth we had a group going in West and East Side. So we went to all three of those groups over several months and kept developing this thing over and over. And we'd bring our little designs in, and we had a lot of different designs to it. And finally we came up with the one where we put the violence around the outside and all the other tactics on the inside. We were trying to make it like a wheel where the violence held everything together. And these tactics were, they were all part of a system. And the, we didn't say that the reason for it, the women weren't telling us men did it in order to get power and control. What they said was they ended up with all the power and all the control when they did this. And I always interpreted it as that women were saying men desired power and control. When I did my men's groups, I'd always say that. I'd always think that, that you were desiring. But I never heard the men say that. And that's when I started to understand the difference between feeling entitled to it, to be entitled to that control and, and desiring it. Like as a white person, me feeling entitled to certain space wasn't a desire to dominate people of color. It's two different things to you know to want to dominate someone and to feel entitled to be in control. So I ended up not thinking that men wanted power and control. I ended up thinking and realizing I think that they felt entitled to it, which is a different way of talking to men about it. Then it's the heck out of me when people will look at the power and control and say, well, a lot of people do that, right? But a lot of people don't attach to it the the sexual abuse and the ability to beat someone up and the ability to scare someone, intimidate someone. So I can, you know, call you a name or something like that, but you can't even, you can't say the abuse is the same unless you, you know, it's almost like those other forms of abuse on that wheel are glued on to the violence where they're kind of attached like this and the violence shapes everything and the, 